In my original SKR 1.4 turbo video, I had installed four stepper drivers and had planned to run both of the Z access steppers off of one driver. Now this is an easy configuration. It saves you from installing an additional stepper and it leaves one slot open in case you want to add a second extruder later. Now some of the viewers of that video mentioned that if I were to install a second stepper driver and separate the Z access stepper motors, that that would allow me to do what's called Z access alignment. What is Z access alignment? Well, that means that instead of having to manually level the left and the right side of this bed, that I can let Marlin do that in firmware for something reproducible and it actually saves you some manual steps when configuring this printer. So how does this work? What modifications will I have to make at this point to the printer to get this working? Well, that's what I'm covering right here today on Curzy Fabrications. Let's go. So to get started, let's talk a little bit more about this feature. First of all, it's called G34Z Stepper Auto Alignment, and you're going to need two things in order to make this work on your printer. Number one, you're going to need a printer that has two or more screws hooked up each to their own stepper motor, and then each of those hooked up to their own stepper driver, because we need to be able to control those screws separately. Number two, we're also going to need some sort of bed auto leveler, such as on my Ender 5 Plus here, we've got a BL Touch. And this is going to allow Marlin to detect as each of those steppers move independently so that we can then level this bed, at least in the left to right orientation. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, we're going to need to change the way that this printer is wired so that we meet those requirements. The way that I had originally hooked this up when I did my SKR 1.4 video was to hook up only four steppers and then pair these two together. So in order to do this, we're going to need to install one extra stepper driver. We're going to need to separate those stepper motors out onto each of those drivers. Then we're going to need to do some Marlin changes to get this all working. And then once we get all that set up, I will show you exactly how to use this correctly. So let's get started by modifying our mainboard. So as far as mods go, this is about as easy as it comes. I have my SKR version 1.4 turbo already installed here. Everything's hooked up like it's supposed to. I've already verified that this is working. So all we're going to need is one additional TMC 2208 or 2209, whatever your other steppers are. And we're going to put that into this last slot here. Now, the first thing you need to make sure, let's make sure that our jumpers are correct. The only jumper that should be on will be this second jumper from the red connector is on the red side. Every other jumper is just sitting here off, not hooked up to anything else. So again, just this second jumper from the red is set to red. Now, we can take our additional stepper, which I've already installed the heat sink onto, Make sure you get the orientation of this stepper correct. Make sure that the red is on this side, the black is on this side. We're just going to install that into the board just as we've done before. Push down gently. We are ready to go as far as the stepper driver is concerned. Now all we need to do, we're gonna take one of our steppers. In this case, Z2 is what this one's labeled. I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna run that to my last stepper driver pins down here on the board. Now, this stepper driver is only powering this motor, which is Z1. This stepper driver is gonna be powering this motor, which is labeled Z2. This is it for the hardware mod. I'm gonna patch this thing back up. Now let's head over to the computer. I'll show you the Marlin mods that I'm going to make to get this working. Then we'll come back to the printer and load it up. So here we are in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to be showing you what I changed to enable this second Z-stepper and then the settings that I also had to change to enable this Z-auto alignment. So first of all, we are in configuration.h right here on the left. And then we are going to have our original file on this left side and we are going to have our new file on this right side over here. So first of all, we're going to change the Z2 driver type from common it out meaning we have these two slashes in front of the line. And we're going to uncomment that line by removing those two slashes and then setting that Z2 driver type to whichever type of separate driver we added. So in this case, I removed the two slashes 
and I set that to TMC2208 just like I have on my other Z steppers. Next up, we're going to look at configuration underscore ADV.h because we're done in this file. And right here, first change in this file up top right here, we have the number of Z stepper drivers. And notice before it was set to one because we just had one Z stepper. Now we have two Z steppers. This is pretty self explanatory. That's an easy change. Next change, we are going to enable Z stepper auto align by just again removing this comment over here so this is our new settings and looking at this it explains how this works whether we have two Z steppers three Z steppers or four Z steppers and how this setting will work uh, we are not going to be doing the Z stepper alignment in the XY orientation we are not going to be doing the Z stepper align known stepper positions because right here this says it requires triple stepper drivers we're not going to have any amplification factor this G34 max grade as it says right here this is the maximum incline that the G34 will handle so basically you can set this to 10% if you wanted to 15% if you wanted to but basically you could really have a bed that was way out of alignment and you have to be careful. You don't want to do anything that could damage the bed, damage the screws, anything like that. So we keep this relatively small. And then if it gets above this, you'll see an error. And then you'll just need to get them a little bit closer together. I'm going to leave it at the default 5%. The Z stepper alignment iterations, how many times do we want it to go back and forth trying to get it as close as possible? Now, if by chance it gets within 0.02, before it reaches that five count, then it will stop. This is just, this is an acceptable accuracy. This 0.02 seems awfully close to me, but given the fact we're gonna stop after five anyway, I'm just gonna leave it at default. Maybe in the future, I may wanna change this to some other value, maybe 0.05, but for now I'm gonna leave it as default. And then do we want to restore the leveling after G34? Yes, we do, we want to re-enable that leveling after we're done and then also we can have it home after it g34s just so everything is back in the center of the bed last but not least down here i'm going to change my currents and i'll tell you why so originally i had set this z current to 800 because i was driving two stepper motors with one stepper driver this is no longer going to be need to be this high because again i have now set it to where i want to be driving one stepper per stepper driver so I'm changing to this to what I have on my other steppers, which is 650. And that should be all the settings we need to change in Marlin. At this point, I can switch back over to file mode. I'm going to compile my firmware, and then I'm going to copy the resultant firmware.bin file over to my SD card, ready to flash it to the printer, and that's where we're going right now. Okay, the first thing we're going to do now is I've got my micro SD card. I'm going to stick that into my micro SD card slot. I'm going to power this on. And when I power it on, it should go ahead and take that new firmware, go ahead and flash it. And in just a minute, we will see the Marlin screen just like we normally would on this printer. There we go, Marlin 206. Now, we're going to do a quick test where I go into motion. I'm going to say move axis. I'm going to say move Z. And I'm going to just choose the one millimeter. And what I want to see is when I move this one way or the other, that both of these screws move. And notice that they do. Both of the screws are moving, which means that my new Z steppers are working in tandem like they're supposed to. And then I can go ahead, since I know that they're moving, I can go ahead and do an auto home. Okay, so now that I'm sure everything that is working correctly, I'm going to get it set up to actually do this test. So the first thing I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and lower this bed all the way to where the two metal pieces are pressed together and or the springs are compressed. And this will make sure that my bed is 100% flat with the mountings that are attached to the lead screws. And you don't need to over tighten this. Once it's tight, it's good enough. 
So that's step one. Next step is I'm gonna go ahead and preheat this so that the bed and everything are already heated up and everything is in its printing state. Everything is doing whatever thermal expansion it's going to have. I just want the bed as level and as predictable as we can when we actually come to printing. So let's do a quick preheat and I'll be right back. All right, so now that we're heated up to our PLA temps, 205 on the nozzle, 60 on the bed, I'm going to simply go in here and go to the motion menu and click auto Z align and that kicks off the entire process. We will see it do a quick home operation. It's going to home Z now. And then once it's done homing Z, it is going to start going back and forth, making sure that each of the screws are aligned to one another to where we have a perfectly level bed to begin our leveling process. So it's going to go to the left here. Now this offset here is what we've set in our firmware, which is the minimum distance that we can get to the edge. And the reason, of course, we choose this is this is going to be equal distance to what we can get on this side due to the cooler. So there's the first. I didn't get within that 0.02 range, so now it's going to go back to the left. Again, we may have this up to five times, and it's going to get as close as it can or reach that 0.02 first. So there we are, it is aligned, and it seems like it's pretty happy with its results because I think it finished before time. I guess the uh, video footage will show that one way or the other. But now all we need to do, now that we are sure that at its base level, that the X and Y is aligned, now we will go through our normal leveling procedures. We will do our manual bed leveling, which will get each of our corners level, and then we will do our auto bed leveling, which will set our mesh correctly. Now at this point, anytime we move the printer, anytime we have to lay it on its side or just move it from this table to another table, we can at that point redo that Z auto align. And at that point, hopefully everything will be back to square on this printer. So I hope that clarifies not only how to enable this feature, but how to use it correctly. And while this is a particularly nice feature to have on something like the Ender 5 Plus. It's an even better feature on something like an Ender 3 printer that has the floating gantry because those gantries are much more likely to get out of sync than something like this bed. So if you have an Ender 5 Plus, if you have an Ender 3 with the two Z leads or an artillery, anything like that that's going to have the dual Z lead screws, I recommend trying to enable this in custom firmware I think it's going to save you a lot of time, particularly if you see that they're not staying in sync or when you power it off, one of them drops on one side. This could save you a lot of time. So if you are a person that pulled down my SKR 1.4 firmware for this printer and you were looking at doing dual Z screws, guess what? I'm going to have a pre-compiled firmware for you that you can get in the description of this video. I'm going to have it for both the 2208 drivers and 2209 drivers. You can pull those down. Now, if you were looking at doing this from source, please follow my directions. I'm not actually going to push this up to my source repo. So you can make these changes manually and recompile that source for yourself. As always, I hope this video was educational. I hope it taught you how to use something correctly that you may not have even been familiar with. If you found this video useful or educational, go ahead and hit like on this video. That lets me know that this is the kind of content that you like seeing. Go ahead and leave me a comment with some other Marlin features that you would like to see me cover in the future. Now, if you really enjoyed this, please go ahead and subscribe. I've got more of this kind of content coming as well as my usual reviews and walkthroughs and things that I do on this channel. Uh, if you'd like to help support this channel, if you are getting a lot of value out of it, I have my PayPal link in the description. I also have my Patreon link, which helps me month to month 
making these videos and keeping the content coming. As always, I really appreciate you just watching these videos. Thank you for your time. Hey, I'm Chris, and this has been Curzy Fabrications. I'll see you next time.